Our goal is outperform the S&P 500 in every asset class on the planet with the exception of Bitcoin since 2000. It's averaged 9.9% .9 per year compounding. It's, it's beat the S&P 500 even with dividends reinvested. That amounts to about 9.5%. Gold's at 99 and yet no one notices it and discredits it. Look, gold is held on every central bank balance sheet and something as ironic as the gold revaluation account. That's the name of it. They will revalue gold. And, and by proxy, they will revalue silver. And I think it's right. Um, I mean, to some degree, silver is being revalued slowly in China. They've already got it $4 an ounce higher than in the West to arbitrage whatever isn't nailed down. That's why they're buying gold mines, silver mines, oil refineries, all of these commodities they're buying because they're critical. And, and all of the deals they're striking on the Belt Road with which amounts to 75% of human population already, 50% of global GDP. All of the countries on there are resource rich and underdeveloped. Look at the countries that they're inviting into, uh, into BRICS. They're all massively resource rich and most of them underdeveloped or have very key shipping lanes or, or trade routes within their borders or around their countries in the shipping lanes of the oceans. Um, yeah, it's huge. And, you know, look at Peru. They're part of the Belt Road, the the um, third largest producer of silver in the world. Mexico said they're interested in joining BRICS. They haven't done anything about it. The first largest. Number two is China. Jim Willie, a guy who I put a lot of, of faith in, although his takes are very sometimes very controversial, but often very brilliant and and oftentimes very much before anyone else says that they are trying to put together China is a OPEC style cartel of silver producers around the globe. So yes, these countries understand that silver is depleting in nature to his point is, is mostly found in byproduct metal mean a uh, mining, meaning the, the companies that mine it all together can't find it or it's too expensive to pull it out. Why do you think China's making a big deal about it and India making a big deal about it? Of course. And that's why they're not going to be overly, transparent in what they're doing because this is you know every man for themselves if you will so um yeah i think that's exactly why china's going around the world buying as many silver mines as they can because it's disappearing and it's needed and its value has been masked by the western suppression and that western suppression has given all of these countries who are now wealthy and sophisticated they were third world 25 years ago now they're wealthy sophisticated coordinated and pissed off and they are they are doing things methodically and using the suppression of the Western paper markets, the stupidity of the Western markets to drain the exchanges of all the, the world's commodities and, and to buy them at subsidized prices. And once there's no bid and the Western exchanges are exposed for what they are, fraudulent, rehypothecated Ponzi schemes, then you will see the Shanghai Metals Exchange, the Dubai Metals Exchange, the Moscow Metals Exchange, all of these exchanges in the East, the South, well, they will take over for the COMEX, the fraudulent and disgraced and discredited fraudulent COMEX and LBMA. And, you know, it's not just precious metals. Look, the Chinese bought the LME, the London Metals Exchange, all the base metals, whereby those metals are mined and they find silver. Well, they now they own that. And, you know, they, they're going around the world in the Belt Road, <clears throat> in the BRICS, buying all of these commodities and mining them in their own countries. They are the number two largest producer of silver in the world, the largest producer of gold in the world. So, yeah, it's real. And I think the Western suppression of price and the rhetoric, the antithesis, if you will, of Wall Street, this, this Wall Street rhetoric, which shuns gold and silver, you know, gold has outperformed the S&P 500 in every asset class on the planet with the exception of Bitcoin since 2000. It's averaged 9.9% .9 per year compounding. It's, it's beat the S&P 500 even with dividends reinvested. That amounts to about 9.5%. Gold's at 99 .9, and yet no one notices it and discredits it. It's the tortoise, not the hare, and it has no counterparty liability. Read The Great Taking by David Rogers Webb, and you'll understand what counterparty liability is, or just look at what we've done to the to the Russians by stealing their five billion in treasuries. It's a default. And so, yeah, Jesse, silver is the most undervalued asset on the planet. It is the 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 
opportunity of a generation. And I don't say that lightly. So the price is the greatest tool of misdirection. Um, the fundamentals, if you are able to do the digging and spend the time researching, not going to find it easily in Western um, media, but go do a little digging. And I think you'll come away saying, yeah, that's a hell of an opportunity. No question about it. Yeah. The best way, as we mentioned last, uh, last show we did together is to send an email to info at milesfranklin.com. Uh, Jesse sent me commodity culture, just so we know where it's coming from. Um, ask any questions you have, whether it be on the first part in gold or this part in silver, uh, precious metals, IRAs, you name it, ask for our price list, which we don't publish online, which will be as competitive or more so than anyone in the country. We hold close to the vest. If that's all you want, great. If you want questions answered, put your phone number in there. We'll call you. Um, of course, there is milesfranklin.com. Our new website is coming out in probably two weeks, which will be far more user-friendly for purchasing. Um, but again, we're kind of a hybrid, and I think you never realize how important a relationship is until there's a problem. And where we're going, relationships will be important. So we prefer the brokerage model, but we do not. Um, our prices will not be undersold, and uh, nor will our reputation. So uh, info at milesfranklin.com. Any questions? Put your phone number there if you want to be contacted or just ask for the price list and we're happy to acquiesce any way we can.